Hey, everybody. Happy Friday to all of you. I know some of you are diligently at work. Uh, today just happens to be a free day for me. And uh, I'm at my office having a little bit of uh, morning coffee. You see the moose on my cup. <laughs> uh, what I wanted to do today is just spend a few minutes with you and have a little conversation. And uh, excuse me one second. And what I want to do is I, I really would like to talk to you uh, again about some things that were sent to me that we find on social media. So I'm going to just kind of share with you some things I find really funny. And uh, the reason I find it funny is because there's so many things that we assume about chemistry. And yet there's so many things that we still don't know. And uh, I just want to share what uh, someone shared with me the other day. So my camera, I'm not able to bring my slides up over my shoulder today in today's broadcast. So what I have to do is go back to, well, we call it old school, back to the old way we used to do it, which means I'm going to go to my slide program here and I'm going to bring up the slides. Now you'll see me up here in uh, the corner of your screen. So I'm still here, uh, but uh, here's what I'd like to do today. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about hydration for the hair. Now, here's why I want to talk about that is because we misunderstand, I think, hydration when it comes to hair. For many of us, hydration, the normal thing we would think of immediately is water. Water is what we as human species have to drink because it keeps our body hydrated. We are a majority liquid, fluid. <laughs> and so... Uh, because of that, internally, taking water internally keeps us hydrated, keeps our skin moist, you know, all of those things. Uh, but when it comes to hair, which is a actually dead, fibrous appendage of the body, uh, it's a little bit different. And so here's what I want to kind of share with you today. Uh, this came on on social media. Someone was asking, they said, give me your very favorite low porosity conditioner and curly, and curly styling products. Low porosity hair certainly is more difficult to condition. Well, when we think of porosity of hair, the higher the porosity of the hair, it means that if that's a metric for measuring hair's ability to hold on to moisture. So the higher the porosity is than the hair, the more porous the hair is. So low porosity hair means simply when I read this, hair that's in relatively good condition. And so now they're talking about how do I condition that hair that has a relatively tight cuticle layer, the hair is in a healthy state. What is the, the best curly styling products for curly hair? And so here is the answer that they get. Uh, this is a hair, curly hair expert. It says clarify away all silicones because, you know, curly hair experts are, they hate silicone. Although there are silicones that are water soluble, not all silicones build up on the hair. Contrary to what people tell you, silicones are probably the most commonly used products that's used in hair care products today to give shine to the hair. They're used as... Um, they fight static electricity. They are film formers. That's what they're called, film formers. They create a film on the hair to make the hair feel flexible and you know bendable, if you will. So, <clears throat> so silicones are used, and they can be used in a situation where you know they're not going to be harmful to the hair. However, they have gotten such a bad rap today that every manufacturer in the industry is trying to produce products without silicones. Now understand when they replace a silicone, when they say they remove silicones, they haven't taken the film formers, the products that eliminate static electricity or the products that give you shine. They have not taken any of those products. All they have done is they've removed silicone, the name, and they may have changed it using something, an alternative that does the same thing. But because everybody is focused on silicones, people can say now we are silicone free. 
said, uh, clarify away all silicones to condition and add good amount to lengths of the hair. Add small amounts of water and squish into the hair several times until conditioner is rinsed. This will help push water into the hair. You're using the conditioner as a conduit for water, which is what actually hydrates the hair. I use InnerSense Color Radiance. I have no idea what that is on my low porosity hair and my hair is perfectly moisturized. So first of all, water does not moisturize the hair. What we consider moisture for the hair comes to us from emollients, conditioners, and even oils that we use. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to think about the nature of oil and water. If you think about the nature of oil and water, you understand that they don't mix well at all. So <clears throat> when I put oil on my hair, a emollient or a conditioner, and they all do have some content of water, but they are mainly getting the flexibility to the hair from the oils or the emollients, which is just another word for oil, an oil combination of conditioning agents. Actually, the hair will repel water because healthy hair actually repels water initially before it absorbs it. That's what we call healthy hair. And if you think back when you went to beauty school, they talked to you about sealing in moisture in your skin. That's the reason we use emollients and moisturizers on our skin, which are not water, but they seal in the water that's internally inside of our body because if we expel too much fluid out of our body we become dehydrated and of course as you well know you can die from dehydration long before you die from hunger that's why most people who are caught in the desert you know you've seen those movies where they died they didn't die of hunger they died of dehydration before they died of hunger so that's what we need to understand so what we do is we, and with when we're dealing with skin, is we put emollients on the surface of our skin. They help to block the water loss. That's what happens in skin. Now, skin is a living tissue. When we think of hair, <clears throat> we have to think about what does the body produce for the hair? It produces something called sebum. Here you see a microphotograph of a sebum. This is not actually what it looks like but they colorized the photo so that it would give you an idea. Well, the sebum actually is sort of yellow, like you see there, but it's a very, very colorized electronic photograph. Just gives you an idea about what's happening with that. Human sebum itself consists of squalene, esters of glycerol, wax, cholesterol, free cholesterol, which is just another type of cholesterol, and fatty acids. So all of these are natural emollients that the body produces, which coat the scalp, which helps you protect the scalp and keep you in your natural acid mantle. They also wick themselves out onto the hair and they help the hair to repel moisture initially so that the hair stays in a healthy state so that the cuticle layers stay compact. Remember, when you wet the hair, with water, water will synchronize the electrostatic charge in the hair. So all of the cuticle layers will have the same electrostatic charge. And as a result of that, they will push away from each other. And that is how the hair swells. Triglycerides are part of a sebum as well. Triglycerides and fatty acids, when you add those two together, they add, they add up to about 57%. So 57% of your sebum is triglycerides. Now, those of you who've been in my classes and we've talked about what kind of oils work best on the hair to help the hair maintain a healthy state, I have always said to you something that has a high concentration of triglycerides. Why? Because the body produces those naturally and those help keep the cuticle layers compact and they help the hair to repel excessive moisture. About 26% of sebum is made up of wax and esters. Esters is just a soluble combination of things that mix together. Squalene, again, is another part of that, about 12%, and free cholesterol, about 
4.5%. So we want to, in order to add moisture and flexibility to the hair, we want to emulate what mother nature does or else we're going to change the whole, the whole way the hair responds, the way the hair absorbs, the way the hair reacts to chemical processes, all of those things will change. That's why hair that has been exposed to chemical process over and over loses a lot of that natural protection. And that's why we have to supplement with artificial things that are made from us in the laboratory to help supplement and replace those natural things that we lose. <clears throat> so here's some information that I think is really key for you to think about. Let's think about, I, I, I call it three things about sebum that you should know. Number one, sebum lubricates the skin to protect against friction and makes it more impervious to moisture. Again, protecting the skin from moisture Further, and lock in the internal moisture. Furthermore, the sebaceous gland transports antioxidants in and on the skin and exhibits a natural light protective activity. It possesses an innate antibacterial activity and has a pro-anti-inflammatory function. So that's really one of the key things about sebum and why it's important you know, we know chemically we remove it and it is water soluble to some degree. You know, when we remove it from the hair, we have to put something back and we do that. That's what surface active conditioners are. They have moisturizers and emollients that help add that to the hair. But because we use the word moisture, we all relate that to water. Number two, one end of the molecule is a fat soluble and anchors itself to any oily residue. So it is attracted to oil. The other end is water soluble. Hair is coated with sebum, a naturally oily substance which protects the hair from drying out. Unfortunately, sebum is also a magnet for dirt. So that's why shampooing your hair is important to do. But even though you shampoo your hair, you have to take an extra step to replace some of those natural protective things that we lose. Number three, the bottom line is sebum is a necessary component of healthy skin. It moisturizes and protects the surface almost your entire body, but it's possible to have too much of a good thing or too little. So you'll have to create a balance. You, I'm sure you've heard people say, you know, health is about balance. Life is about balance. Maintaining quality of our hair fiber is about balance as well. Now, many of you have heard me talk about <clears throat> the what we call cell membrane complex, natural lipids, we have all those names for it. Uh, cosmetic chemists call it 18-MEA. Uh, and uh, interesting thing about 18-MEA is it is a covalently bonded in part of body, what the body produces. Covalently bonded means naturally exists in the cuticle layers. That it means it's, it's very strong, uh, but it wears away have you heard me say many times, over a period of consistent chemical processes over and over again, every time we swell the hair, we break down or wear away some of that, what we call 18-MEA. It is responsible for providing hair with its hydro, oh, hydrophobicity, meaning it repels moisture, water repellent property which protects hair by preventing it from absorbing too much water from the environment. It also pro provides the hair with softness, lubricity, lubricity, and shine. So these natural oils, these natural emectants, these natural, you know, emollients, these are needed to keep the hair in a healthy state. And nowhere does any cosmetic chemist believe that water is going to moisturize hair. Water has nothing to do with the fibrous tissue of hair. So hopefully that made a little bit of sense to you and uh, uh, you got some nuggets from that. Uh, I wanna talk a little bit now about some of our upcoming classes. If you found this interesting, share it with your friends. If you say, wow, I'd like to learn more, come visit us. Uh, for those of you that have taken our classes before, either Hair Color School or Formulation Foundation, or if you just want to learn how to formulate, uh, we have a program coming up, uh, actually, uh, it's coming up uh, this weekend, 
uh, February 27th, that's a Sunday, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. It's an online course. You can find it on our website at www.gurunation.net. Or if you're watching this on Instagram, you can simply click on the link that's in my bio and uh, it will take you directly to our educational page where you can purchase your tuition for the class. So uh, let me go over here and let me talk about uh, something else we got coming up on Monday, upcoming programs on Monday, February 28th. The science of it, this is all about hair color science, how hair color works, how it interacts with the hair. Understanding acids and alkalis, understanding what peroxide really does. I find that a lot of us in the industry, again, not a lot of science, but there's a lot of assumption. There's a lot of belief system. And sometimes overcoming those are difficult because you know we take great value in the people who taught us and none of us want to believe that we were taught things that were incorrect. But unfortunately, sometimes that happens simply because the person who's teaching you didn't was not grounded in the information to begin with. So this is a, a science class. It is uh, great fun. We have a lot of good times in the science class. And uh, if you want to get a little geeky with us, come visit us. Uh, you can also find that on our website and it is available. Hair Color School is coming up. It's only a, a week or so away. It begins March the 6th. That is session number one. Uh, I'm honored to be working that program with Max Massiano, Yvette Fontani, and um, we are your three coaches. It is a program that uh, lasts for a month. It is a month-long program. Hold on, let me get my... It is a month long program. We meet every week. We have a class. You're given a week's worth of homework to complete. And then we come back the next week. We do a little review. We move on to our next segment. There are four segments in this program. Um, we truly believe that when you leave this program, you will have all the information that you need to navigate successful hair color uh, processes. Um, but it all comes from repetition. Many of our students have uh, repeated the course more than once because they found that, you know, although it's great, you know, and they have an opportunity to stay connected with us on a message messaging thread during the week, uh, they still needed to come back and be exposed more and more. It's like my mentor used to always say, he said, more often than not, you need to be reminded, not taught. And uh, that's why repetition is so important. So uh, we invite you, if you want to really dive into hair color, uh, come see us. We have some really great content <clears throat> that you won't find anywhere else on social media. Why do I say that? It's because we are the original source of the content you are now. <laughs> some of that content that you consider um, to be original, we are the original source of that content. I, I, we are honored that people are taking our information and teaching it. But we also want you to understand that sometimes if I take, if I'm exposed to information for just a short period of time, and then I run with it, like I own it, I may not be able to deliver all the content properly and in the, uh, the proper way that a learner will walk away with information. So that's something for you to just keep in mind. And then uh, people are asking about the book. Uh, I'm excited about the book and it will be available for pre-orders April 1st. It will be on our website. So you can pre-order a signed copy starting April 1st, 2022. Uh, we really believe this book is going to do very well. And we believe that hairdressers are gonna find it not only a fun and interesting read, but a handbook that you can actually keep with you and use it as a resource manual while you're working in the salon. And then finally, I wanted to announce that Guru Nation is going to be going on location this year. Uh, we are going to be coming to Chicago, Illinois uh, sometime in April. I think we changed that to May now because of the dates, but uh, I'll have to check with our people there. We know that we're going to be setting up to come into Covington, Louisiana. So be watching for those dates that we will be posting soon. I think... Uh, we would love to meet you in a class and in person and spend some time with you. As we always say, come play in our sandbox. 
uh, we think it may change the way you look at color for the rest of your life. And of course, we love for you to stay in touch with us. You know, it's very important uh, that we, we stay in touch with our people who follow us. So here are the ways you can reach out to us. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at Guru Nation, or you can also join Guru Hair Tribe, which is a private, non-branded, brand neutral forum. I don't care what hair color brands you use, uh, but I want to help you become a successful hair colorist because I believe actually the magic is in you. It is not in the products that we use. Uh, you can also find our website, which is www.gurunation.net. Now, because a lot of people don't clear their cookies or clean their or dump their cash uh, periodically on their electronic devices, sometimes when they try to log on to our website, <clears throat> especially getting into our educational portfolio, they find a real challenge. The screen keeps spinning. So what we've done is we've put a link in our my, on my Instagram page. And so you can find that link at Real Captain Color. And if you just click on it, it's a link tree link. It will take you directly to our website. And so you'll have no problems getting on, even if you didn't clear your cookies, even if you didn't dump your cash. Uh, you can find us on Instagram. You can find me at Real Captain Color. Uh, you can find my teaching partner, one of my teaching partners, Maxim Hare. Uh, you can find Max, uh, Max Massiano there. Yvette Frontani, you can find Yvette at Yvette underscore Frontani. And Erica Blancet, one of our newest uh, members of our team. Uh, Erica, you can find her and follow her on Instagram. I recommend you follow all three of them. They are all very talented artists and they are also very uh, kind and giving individuals. Their goal is to help you become more successful. If you're watching this video on YouTube, we wanna thank you so much for subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, you can subscribe by just clicking down here just below the screen and that way you'll get notification anytime we post something new on YouTube. Uh, we are trying to grow our YouTube viewership and we thank those of you who have been spreading the word and um, we know we got a lot of people from overseas and around the world who catch us on YouTube so we're thankful for that. Our YouTube channel is either Guru Nation or Dennis Gebhardt. You can find us at either one of those and uh, we have tons of videos uh, on the YouTube channel here uh, that you can log on to at no charge and listen to us chat about all types of subjects in the hair salon business, in the hair dressing business, mostly focused towards hair color. So anyway, that is the extent of our um, little time we spent together here today. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope I haven't gone on too long for you or gotten too heavy or deep, but here's the thing to remember. Water doesn't moisturize hair. Write that down in really large letters in your notes if you've been writing notes. Moisture, what we call moisture, comes from oils, emollients, conditioners. That's where it, we're adding really flexibility. That's what we're adding. We're not adding water to the hair. So hopefully you find this helpful. So until I see you again, from my heart to yours, as always, I am Captain Color. You have an amazing day. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye.